Tonight is a special night. A night when mountains will move away. Your mountain in particular. Your hills in particular. And every challenge of your life, the Lord will deal with that tonight in Jesus' name. Yes, I know. Somebody there, yes, I know. It will happen tonight. I said it will happen tonight. Raise up those sons, Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you tonight and bless your name. We thank you because you are here already. You are here in your power. You are here with your anointing. You are there with your authority. And you are here to move every mountain away in every life in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that this day will be a special day for everyone. A day of joy. A day of miracle. A day of the supernatural. A day of intervention. And a day of signs and wonders for everyone in Jesus' name. Nobody will go empty-handed. For testimony in every mouth. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, God bless you. You can see now. I welcome everyone to this night of supernatural intervention. The Lord has come tonight to intervene in your affairs and in your family and in your life. Something is going to happen. It will put joy and laughter in your life. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God, like you have come tonight, must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We have come here tonight seeking the Lord. We have come here tonight wanting to touch the Lord. And as we diligently, earnestly, fervently, believingly touch the Lord tonight, all things are possible. It's all by faith. That's why it says there that without faith, it's impossible to please him. But the people that come, the people that seek him, the people that pray to him, they must believe. Thank God I'm talking to those who believe tonight. That God is a rewarder. He will reward you tonight. And he will bless those who are diligently seeking him. Whatever we need, salvation. Whatever we are asking for, deliverance. Whatever it is, we're praying for victory. Somebody there is having the victory. And freedom. And healing. And miracle. And signs and wonders. Provision. Answers to prayer. It's all by faith. All by faith. Look at verse 4 here. In verse 4, by faith, Abel. Look at verse 5, by faith, Enoch. Look at verse 7, it says, by faith, Noah. Look at verse 8 there, by faith, Abraham. And then look at uh, verse 11, through faith also, Sarah. And then we're coming to verse 17, by faith, Abraham. And then in verse 20, by faith, Isaac. Look at verse 21, by faith, Jacob. Look at verse 22, by faith, Joseph. Verse 23, by faith, Moses. And then in verse 27, by faith, he forsook Egypt. And then in verse 29, it says, by faith, they passed through the Red Sea. And then verse 30, somebody there, verse 30, one, two, three, go. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. It's happening again tonight. I said it's happening again tonight. In your life, it will happen. In your family, it will happen. It is all by faith divine intervention it's all by faith 
every miracle we get from the hand of the Lord, it is all by faith. Number one, by personal faith. Personal faith. You take hold of the promise of God and you say tonight, at this very time, the promise of God will be yes and amen in my life. It will be so. It's number two, a praying faith. It's not a kind of faith that is dormant, faith that is quiet, Pray that is not asking for anything. You are coming, ask and seek and knock. The door will be opened unto you. Everyone that asketh receiveth. Somebody there tonight. Everyone, I said everyone. I said everyone. Everyone that asketh receiveth. It is a praying faith. Number three, it's a present faith. It's not a faith of a thousand years ago. It, a, a faith of 10 years ago, it's a faith of today. And today, that faith you have in your heart will draw the blessing of God down in Jesus' name. Amen. Number four, it's a prevailing faith. A faith that cannot fail. A faith that will not be denied. Tonight, no denial. I said tonight, no denial. It's a prevailing faith. It's a practical faith. It's not something in theory. You will see it yourself tonight. Miracle, I said you'll see it tonight yourself. Healing, I said you'll see it tonight yourself. That mountain is going. That long-standing problem is going. It is practical faith. It is positive faith. Positive faith that comes to add something definite, something positive into your life in Jesus' name. You know, it's a preventive faith. It will prevent Satan. He cannot come in again. Evil spirit, he cannot come in again. Adversity will not come in again. A preventive faith, it's a persevering faith. It's a persevering faith. You have it here. As you are going back home, this faith will persevere with you. As anything you touch, faith will transform it in Jesus' name. Tonight, only believe something will happen. I said tonight, only believe something must happen. Say in my life, tonight, something must happen. That door must open. That mountain must move. Their sickness I see there tonight at the end of the final amen. It is gone in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 9. In Mark chapter 9, I'm reading here from verse 23. Verse 23, Jesus said unto him, that man is no more here, he's talking to you tonight. Jesus says to you tonight, I said, Jesus is talking to you tonight. If thou canst believe, your tears will be wiped away. If thou canst believe, that pain will vanish away. If thou canst believe, bad luck will vanish away. If thou canst believe, that mountain will move away. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Thank God I believe tonight. I'm believing on your behalf tonight. I know it will happen. I said I know it will happen. Your day of joy has come. And your day of victory has come. Problems are rolled away tonight in Jesus' name. Three things. One, two, three, and we're there. You'll be there tonight. You will get there tonight. Number one, the personal faith of the just. The personal faith of the just. When you write the just, you can put in bracket of the justified. Justified. The personal faith of the just or the personal faith of the justified. Point number two, the promised fullness from Jehovah. The promised fullness from Jehovah. The blessing you are receiving tonight is not like a drop of water in a glass. The blessing of tonight is not a trickle. The blessing of tonight is not something we can barely see at the bottom of the cup. The, the blessing of tonight will be full. 
fullness of blessing in your life fullness of joy in your life and fullness complete total restoration in your life in jesus name the promised fullness from jehovah point number three the possessing faith there's a kind of faith that possesses that's what i'm talking about in point number three the possessing faith of joint heirs joint heirs you will inherit i said you will inherit and your blessing nobody will take away from you in jesus name point number one tell me your number one over there tell me out aloud tell me as if you are the just and justified we're talking about the personal faith of the just i'm coming to hebrews chapter 10 hebrews chapter 10 and i'm reading from verse 37 hebrews chapter 10 we're reading from verse 37 it says in verse 37 it says for yet a little while and he that shall come will come i thought there'll be an amen over there a little while just a little while this thing will soon be over that problem will soon be over that mountain will soon vanish away and all those enemies they will soon become powerless and impotent and worthless in your life in jesus name all the disturbances of your life and all the things that weigh you down and then you are crying and shedding tears the time of crying is vanishing away for yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry your miracle will not tarry the power will not tarry the healing will not tarry now the just shall live by faith you see that the just shall live by faith as we expect him the justification of the lord is by faith the just shall live by faith i'm looking at romans chapter one romans chapter one i'm reading from verse 17. romans chapter one i will read him from verse 17. in verse 17 it's still saying the same thing over and over it says for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. The faithfulness of God revealed from faith to faith. The power of God revealed from faith to faith. And the intervention of God, the interaction with God, the connection with God, the signs and the wonders and the power flow of the Almighty God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written. The just shall live by faith you see that the just shall be saved by faith the just shall be healed by faith the just shall be delivered by faith the just shall be victorious by faith and whatever it you need tonight by faith somebody shout by faith the personal faith of the just look at habakkuk old testament habakkuk we're looking at this Old Testament book, and we're looking at uh, chapter 2. Actually, this is where that sentence, that statement, this is where it originated. Look at it, Habakkuk. We're looking at uh, chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2. And I'm reading here from verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2. Let me go back to verse 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what he will say unto me. He's going to say something unto you tonight. I said he's saying something unto you tonight. And then it goes on in verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. There's a new vision in your life. A new revelation for your life and a new destiny for your life in jesus name write the vision make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it you begin to run you begin to walk you begin to perform and you hear your amen yeah. that he may run that readeth it for the vision is yet for an appointed time 
there's an appointed time. I say there's an appointed time. My appointed time has come. My own appointed time has come. My family's appointed time has come. My business appointed time has come. My profession's appointed time has come. The appointed time of your victory, it has come. Appointed time of your goodness, that has come. It says, but at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, though it tarry, wait for it. Are you waiting tonight? I said, are you waiting tonight? Because it will surely come. That appointed time will surely come. And then it goes on to say, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. That is, other people, those who are proud, that's not you. Those who are transgressing, that's not you. Those who are unbelieving, that's not you. But this one is for you now. I said this one is for you now. But the just shall live by his faith. The, ju the just justified. Those who have come to the Lord, they have repented of their sins, and they have laid hold of the promise of God. And they know that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be forgiven, shall be justified. They are justified, and they are just, and they are forgiven, and the blood of the Lamb has washed their hearts whiter than snow. There's no condemnation anymore in your heart. No condemnation in your life. And there's no condemnation in your spirit. Justified and just. But the just shall live by his faith. Look at verse 20 there. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. That means all the things that contradict your progress, they are silenced tonight. All the things that contradict the performance of the goodness of your life, or in your life tonight, they are silenced in Jesus' name. The just shall live by faith. Look at Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. You know what we've been reading? Hebrews, the just shall live by faith. Romans, the just shall live by faith. Habakkuk, the just shall live by faith. Now we're looking at Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 11. Must be very important. Look at this, look at this. Galatians chapter 3, verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live. Tell me again. By faith, by faith. The just shall live by faith. That means you are saying, I know. It's not by rolling on the ground. It's not by burning anything. It's not by going somewhere. It's not by punishing myself that I'm going to be just or justified. You come to the Lord by faith. And you know that Jesus died for you on the cross of Calvary. And as you turn away from sin and you turn to the Savior tonight, you are justified. Heaven will record it, you are justified. The angels will affirm it, you are justified. The Spirit of God will bear witness in your heart, you are justified. And then what will happen after that? Verse 13, verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Your curse cancelled. Punishment cancelled. Penalty cancelled. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed it is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that the blessing of Abraham will come on you, the Gentile, through Jesus Christ, that we might receive. Somebody is a receiver tonight. That we might receive. I said somebody that is receiving tonight. Receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. 
it will happen. The Lord justifies us, and the Lord cleanses us, and the Lord changes our lives, and then all the guilt, all the condemnation of the sins of the past, everything is taken away. Romans chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 23. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Have you noticed in your Bible, there is no full stop there? Only semicolon. No stop there. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And there are people, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I come short. I cannot make it. I cannot live right. I come short of the glory of God. Don't stop there. Verse, what's the next verse? I said, what's the next verse? Being justified, tell me, freely. You come, salvation is free. Justification is free. And when you come, the pardon of God is free. And the peace of God is free. It says, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission, for the cleansing, for the pardon, for the removal of the sins that have passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believes in Jesus. There's no discrimination. There's no respect of persons with God. Everyone that comes to God through Christ to be forgiven, it is none. To be justified, it is none. To enter into the kingdom of God, it is none. There is no excuse. The door is open for everyone. Somebody there is entering tonight. I said somebody there is entering tonight. All the guilt of sin will vanish away. Condemnation of sin will vanish away. Eternal penalty and punishment for sin will vanish away in Jesus' name. Now point number two. The promised fullness from Jehovah. The promised fullness from Jehovah. We're going to look at something tonight. As we look at this from his fullness through Jehovah, God has revealed himself with seven compound names. And those seven compound names, they are with the title, the name Jehovah. Come to Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. Everything we need is provided in this revelation of the name of God. Look at Genesis chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 14. Genesis 22. And we're reading from verse 14. Why don't you back up to, let me read verse 8 so you will understand. Look at verse 8. Genesis 22 verse 8. And Abraham said, my son, tell me, God will provide himself a lamb for a bunch of rain. So they went both of them together. Look at verse 13. And Abraham, Abraham lifted up his eyes and he looked and behold behind in a ram caught in a ticket by his son. And Abraham went and he took the ram and he offered him up for a bunch of rain in the stead of his son. Look at the name of God. We are talking about verse 14. And Abraham called the name of the place, shout it out, Jehovah Jireh, as it is said unto this day, even to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. Everything you need, he will provide. 
He has provided the lamb for the sacrifice. Behold, the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He provided that lamb himself. And with him, he provides every other sin in your life. Peace of mind has come. Purity has now come. Power has come. Healing has come. Provision has come. All things that you need, let me say for myself, all things that I need. All things that I need. All things that I need. Jehovah Jireh will provide for you in Jesus' name. Number two, Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. I'm reading here from verse 26. Exodus chapter 16, chapter 15, verse 26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the Egyptians. It will not be on your body. It will not be your blood. It will not be your kidney. It will not be your intestine. It will not come on your eyes. It will not come on your head. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. What the translators of the Bible did is to translate the word Jehovah Rapha. When it says, I am the Lord that heals thee, but in the original, Jehovah Rapha. Number one, Jehovah Jireh. He is a provider. He'll provide for you. He will meet all your need. And his Jehovah Rapha is the Lord that heals thee. When will he heal you? I say, when will he heal you? Is healing all the time. Over here tonight, any sickness there, I command, come out in Jesus' name. He will heal you. He has healed you. Number three now, we're looking at Exodus chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17, it was battle. And maybe you are going through warfare, you have won the victory already. Exodus chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men, and go out, fight with, with Amalek. And tomorrow I will stand on the rock, on the top of the hill, with the rod of God in my hand. And Joshua did as Moses had said unto him and fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and all went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass that when Moses held up his hand, Jesus is holding up his hand on your behalf. He's making intercession for you. You must overcome. You must win the victory. Because Jesus is greater than Moses. Look at Moses here. He held up his hand. And Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Jesus will never let down his hand. On your behalf. I said on your behalf. On your family's behalf. When he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. The hands of Jesus will never be heavy. And he took his stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon, and Aaron and all stage up his hands, the one on the one hand, on the one side, and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua, and Joshua, and Joshua, discomfited, defeated, conquered Amalek, subdued Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Verse 15, and Moses built an altar and called the name of each, everybody, Jehovah Nisi. That means the Lord, our banner. The Lord is your victor. He'll win every battle for you. 
anything that confronts you from this night, you have got the victory in Jesus' name. They come during the day, you overcome. They come during the night, you overcome. They come in the market, you overcome. They come in your community, they overcome. They are coming from the river, you overcome. They come in the bush spirit, and you overcome. And they come with man-made spirit, you overcome in Jesus' name. Because the Lord your God is Jehovah Nisi, is the Lord our banner. We are coming now to Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. And I'm reading from verses 23 and 24. Gideon was asking a question. He said, where be all the miracles? Where are all the miracles that our father spoke about? Maybe there's a question in your mind. What are the miracles we used to hear about? Those miracles are back. I said, those miracles are back. What is the manifestation of power? We used to hear about it many years ago. It's back to you, to your house, and to your doorstep in Jesus' name. Judges chapter 6 and verse 23. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee. Peace be unto thee. Fear not, thou shalt not die. This sin will not kill you. This problem will not end your life. Fear not, thou shalt not die. That dream will not kill you. Those evil powers will not kill you. Those enemies, they don't have the final say in your life. Thou shalt not die. Why don't you say it for yourself? Why don't you say it for yourself? Heaven has heard, it is confirmed. Look at verse 24. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it, tell me, Jehovah Shalom unto this day. Unto which day? I said unto which day? Unto this day. It is yet in Ophrah of the Abiezerites. The Lord our peace. The Lord, our peace. Now we're coming to Psalm 23. This is my psalm. I said, this is my psalm. This one is for me. I said, this one is for me. Psalm 23, again, the translators of the Bible, they interpreted this one from the original. The original is Jehovah Raha. Not Rafa. Rafa is for healing. But this one, Jehovah Raha. The Lord, my shepherd. This one is good. It is, is for you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. All needs are supplied in your life. All problems are solved in your life. All you're seeking for, they are provided in Jesus' name. The Lord is my shepherd. Tell me now. I shall not want from tonight, from tonight, you are carrying that miracle back home. You are carrying the power of God back home. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Mine. He restoreth my soul. Mine. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk, through the valley, I am walking through. I said I am walking through. You will not die in the wilderness. You will not die in the valley. Your life will not be finished in the valley. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me. In the presence of mine enemies, thou anointest my head with oil. My cup, my cup, the days of famine are over for you. Days of unemployment are over for you. 
The days of scarcity, they're over for you. The days of borrowed, lend me, lend me, over for you. You will lend other people from today. Because my cup runs over. Surely. 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 Goodness and mercy shall follow me. A few days of my life. Some of the days of my life. The middle days of my life. The younger days of my life. All the days of my life. And I will dwell. And I will dwell. And I will dwell. In the house of the Lord. Forever. Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 6. This one again. The translators translated it. It is Jehovah's seed Keno. Jehovah's seed Keno. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 6. In his day, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell safely. This is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. The Lord is your righteousness. Inside you, the Lord is your righteousness. Covering you like a blanket, the Lord is your righteousness. Going before you, the Lord is your righteousness. At the time of prayer, the Lord is your righteousness. When you stand before the throne of the Almighty God, asking for something in prayer, the Lord is your righteousness in Jesus' name. Ezekiel chapter 48. Ezekiel chapter 48. I'm reading from verse 35. Ezekiel chapter 48. And we're reading from verse 45. Uh, 35. This is the final verse of Ezekiel. Final verse of Ezekiel. And he said, The Lord being present, Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah Shammah. Look at it. It was round about 18,000 measures. And the name of the city from that day shall be Jehovah is there. Jehovah is here, is present with you. He will go with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Every need of your life, He will supply in Jesus' name. Number one, personal faith. Number two, the promised fullness. Number three, now, the possessing faith of joint heirs the possessing faith of joint heirs what has the lord called you what has the lord called me what has the lord called us we're joint heirs with christ say i'm a joint heir say i'm a joint heir uh -uh. say it with assurance now you will inherit i said you will inherit as I look at you and see your faces there, I see glory there. I see victory there. I see provision there. I see total abundant supply. You are a joint heir in Jesus' name. Look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Reading from verses 16 and 17. The Spirit... Bear it witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Joint heirs with who? With Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we be that we may be also glorified together joint heirs joint heirs what, what the joint heirs possess 
what the joint is, what do they have? I'm showing you some people so that you will see, that's like me, that's like me. He was a joint heir, I am a joint heir. What he had tonight, I have. I said, What they had tonight, 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 you have in Jesus' name. Number one, his name is Jacob. Jacob. We're looking at Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28. He was a joint heir with Abraham and Isaac. You are joint heir with somebody greater than Abraham and Isaac. But look at their possession and look at the inheritance of the joint heirs. We're looking at Genesis 28 verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set and he took of the stones of that place and he put them for his pillows and he laid down in, uh, in that place to sleep and he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on earth and the top of each reached to heaven there's a ladder between you and heaven now there's a passage between you and heaven now and behold the angels of god no evil spirit there no evil spirit in your life the angels of god no demons there no demon in your family and behold, the angels of God, no occultic power here, no occultic power in your family. And behold, the angels of God, no wicked personality, no wicked personality in your life. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on each. And behold, the Lord stood above each and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father. And thy, the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest to thee, I will give it. Joint here, to thee, I will give it. And to thy seed, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. Are, are you there? And it says, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Look at verse 15. Mark this one in your Bible, your joint ear. Always come back to this verse 15. This is yours. Say, this is mine. And behold, I am with thee. And will keep thee in all the places whither thou goest. And will bring thee again into this land. Look at this, look at this. For I will not leave thee. Until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. The Lord will not leave you until he has done that which he has spoken to you of. They are done in your life. A joint heir, number two, Joseph. Joseph, look at this. Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39. I'm reading from verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph. You see what you over there? And he was a prosperous man. Didn't I tell you poverty has gone? Didn't I tell you joblessness has gone? Hey, let me remind you. Let me remind you. That God gave Joseph a dream, a dream of promotion, a dream of climbing high, a dream of ruling and reigning. And his brothers didn't like the dream. It was too good for Joseph. It was too great for Joseph. And so they said, set him up, make him a slave. He wants to be a king. He wants to rule. No. We're going to contradict that. 
we're going to stop his destiny. Nobody will stop your destiny. That's what they thought they did. They sold him off. And they were saying, we got rid of him. Nobody can get rid of you. Yeah. What are you there? I said, nobody can get rid of you. Yeah. You'll be climbing and climbing to that place the Lord has appointed for you. Yeah. Look at this. The Lord was with Joseph. He was a prosperous man. He was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. That the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. From today, everything your hand touches will prosper. And Joseph found grace in his, in his sight. And he, and he served him. And he made him overseer over his house. And all that he did, all that he had, he put in his hand. That's not the end of Joseph. The miracle you are getting today, that's not the end. Healing you are getting today, that's not the end. The job you are getting today, that's not the end. The promotion you are getting today, that's not the end. Something higher is coming. Chapter 41, verse 38. Chapter 41, verse 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as they says, a man in whom the spirit of the Lord is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, and Pharaoh said unto, and Pharaoh said unto, for as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art, you are going to find out from today. Uh, in your class, in your school, in your place of work, in your market, in your family, no one as wise as you are, as prospered as you are, as victorious as you are. Verse 40, thou shalt be over my house. According unto thy word, shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. That's what his brother said will not happen. And it happened. And for you today, Joint heir with Christ. What they said will not happen. What they said will not happen. They say, I, I can't see him getting promoted. Wait, they will see. I can't see him having the fullness of joy. Wait, they will see. What they said will not happen has happened. Tonight it has happened. Number one, Jacob. Number two, Joseph. Number three, Joshua. Joshua chapter one. Joshua chapter one. I'm reading here from verse three. Joshua chapter one, verse three. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. It is coming. And then verse 5, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. He said, You are a joint ear with Moses, Joshua. What Moses had, Moses is now gone. Joint here, joint here. I'm going to give you what I gave unto Moses. And this Joshua, now God said, as you are joint here with Jesus Christ, this is yours tonight. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Chapter 3, chapter 3, 
This one you have to mark in your Bible. Chapter 3 of Joshua. Chapter 3 of Joshua. And I'm reading here from verse 7. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day, this day, will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel. This day will, will the Lord begin to magnify you in the sight of your family, in the sight of your classmates, in the sight of the people around you, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so, so I will be with you. Joint air, joint air. Look at the power, privilege, prayer of the joint air. Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 12. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord divided up the Amorites before the children of Israel and said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon. This authority. I said this is authority. Ah, remember I was joint heir, joint heir. And as so I joint heir with Christ, what you decree today is confirmed in Jesus' name. What Moses could have said, Joshua now said, when, when Moses uh, threw out the, the rod, the sea was parted. God never said no to Moses. And Joshua that came to be a joint heir with Moses, God never said no to him. You are a joint heir with Christ, God will never say no to you. Yeah. Verse 10, verse, eight, verse 12, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeah, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still. For you, the sun will stand still. For you, paths of darkness will stand still. And the moon and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this rich in the book of Jason? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it. Mark down the date of this day for yourself. No day like that day day before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man for the Lord fought for Israel. The Lord is fighting for you. I said the Lord is fighting for you. Jacob, he got it, you get it. Joseph, he got it, you will get it. Joshua, he got it, you are going to get it. Come to First Chronicles chapter 4. First Chronicles chapter 4. I'm looking at a man here. His name is Jabez. His name is Jabez. We're looking at First Chronicles. First Chronicles chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him was sorrow. Sorrow of the past terminates today. Sorrow of last year terminates today. How? Look at verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that thou will bless me indeed. Number one, it has happened. And enlarge my coast. Number two, it has happened. And that thine hand might be with me. Number three, the hand of the Lord will be with you. And that thou wouldest keep me from evil. The Lord will keep you from evil. And that it may not grieve me. Number five, the grief of your life, the mischief of people against your life, it is cancelled in Jesus' name. And God granted him, and God granted him, and God granted him that which he requested. Look at all these people from Jacob, 
to Joseph, to Joshua, to Jabez, tell me what you are going to get today. Everything you are asking is coming. Evil days are over. Evil personalities are over. Number five, Job. You know, when some people, when they hear about Job, they shake their heads. Don't shake your head for Job. Things turned around. He became a joint heir. And now that you become a joint heir, nobody will shake head for you. Because every good thing the Lord will bless will bring to your life in Jesus' name. And let's look at uh, chapter 42. Job chapter 42. I'm reading from verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Somebody there. And the Lord turned the captivity of that brother. And the Lord turned the captivity of that sister. Where are you there? And the Lord is turning your captivity tonight in Jesus' name. When he prayed, when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Everything you have lost, the Lord will double and give you. Everything that is, you know, the enemy has taken away, the Lord will double and give unto you. And to a joint heir, I said unto a joint heir, I said unto a joint heir. Look at verse 12, look at verse 12. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and uh, 6,000 camels and a, a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand uh, a thousand she has his do you see what the lord is saying about a job he said no more one two three units no more tens twenty three thirty four and no more hundreds one hundred and five one hundred and seven thousands 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 coming from this angle thousands Coming from that angle, thousands. And coming from anywhere, thousands and thousands upon your life in Jesus' name. Verse 15, verse 15, and in all the land, there was no woman found so fair as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this, Job lived and hundreds. And 40 years after this, after the devil came to do his worst, the Almighty God came to do his best. Better things have come for you. And the best have come in Jesus' name. And he saw his sons and his sons' sons, even to four generations. Jacob, Joseph, Tell me, Joshua, tell me, Jabez, tell me, Job, Joel. We're looking at Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. 